I get situated here. If you have any questions about Caternix quail, feel free to comment. And uh, we are just doing questions tonight. Um, it is a rapid fire Q&A. All right, so I'm here, right on time. I don't know how that happened. I didn't think that was gonna work, but uh, I am on time. And uh, so on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live Q&A. And that is typically about two, two and a half, three hours long. It's a community setting. We all hang out, we all talk. It's more of a community kind of thing. Uh, Mondays, I started just to help maybe new people that are not comfortable with being part of the community yet. Uh, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you do have questions, if you could put a couple uh, question marks or explanation points um, at the end or the beginning of the question so that I could uh, better see it, I would appreciate it. And uh, we'll get going here. All right. Uh, again, I don't read all the comments on Monday. So everybody that is here, welcome. We're very happy you're here. Uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, but I'll only be reading the questions tonight. Uh, Frank Crow says, I have cleaned thousands of chickens, but tomorrow I'll be dispatching quail for the first time. They are so small, do you just need a couple fingers to clean them out or a spoon? Uh, either one, we use our fingers. Um, I think eventually the spoon would get annoying for you. Uh, but yeah, the fingers are, are just fine. Um, your fingers get a little sore after a while. But uh, yeah, they, they do just fine. It's, it's a lot simpler than what you think. So um, yeah, don't overstress, but congratulations. It's gonna be a really cool step for you. And uh, I hope that it goes really well for you. Uh, Bryce says, hello from Maine. What's the best way to keep predators away from my quail, including neighbor's cats? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of things, I guess. Um, I would use quarter inch on the sides. Um, Make sure you've got a solid top uh, or you at least put a solid top on. Um, off the ground, you know, with legs would help. Um, it's probably a good practice to have two latches um, because raccoons are very, they're known for being able to do un undo a latch. Um, so probably two latches on each side. Um, those are a couple of ideas for you. Uh, do, do, do Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll be happy to answer for you. Everybody that is here, we're... Sorry. Um, had a phone call. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm not reading any of the uh, comments except for any of the questions. So if you have questions, that is what this is for tonight. Uh, but we'd love for you to join us on Sundays as well uh, for the community setting. We have a lot of fun. I, I think we have a lot of fun. Um, not a lot of questions. Uh, Watkins Wildlife says, "Hey Zach, is there anything that is there anything we can give the quail to help them with feathers that have been picked off?" Um, yeah, I mean, there's like show feed and things like that to help with the feathers. Uh, so there's specific feeds for that that you could use. Um, the Best, I, well, I don't want to say the best. The easiest thing to do, the least expensive thing to do is just wait till they molt. Um, as long as the feathers... As long as the feathers did not come out um, during the brooder process, then once they molt, they'll come back. Um, but they're, they're special feed that you can give them and things like that. Uh, what size mesh do you use to, uh, we use quarter inch, well, I have half inch and quarter inch on there. Um, I'm actually going to try a different kind of thing. I just have to build it and then we're going to see which one works best. I'll probably do the video on both to show you. Um, I'm thinking that the one I have would work great for a lot of people. Uh, but I'm a little bit more larger scale, and so I'm going to try something else. But I'll, 
once I make that, we'll test it out for a week or two, and then I'll do a video on both. And uh, and it's really easy to make. I mean, I can literally walk you through it like that. Uh, so uh, we caught a few and deep fried them. Turned out dry and tough. Any good recipes? I like the grill. Uh, but if you're on Facebook, there's a Facebook group called Quail in the Kitchen, and they just share each other's recipes and things like that. Um, and uh, it's a great group. So if you're on Facebook, I join that, and there's a ton of recipes on there. I'm about to start taking quail to the farmer's market, uh, but need to figure out pricing. Um, I would figure out pricing by looking locally first. Uh, look at Craigslist. Um, look and see if there's any local Facebook groups, um, you know, homesteader Facebook groups or self-sufficient uh, Facebook groups. Um, Craigslist is a great source to find out what other people are selling in your area. Uh, and obviously you need to know what your cost is and how much you're wanting to make uh, by doing all the work. Um, so uh, that's what my suggestion would be. I don't really like to do, I don't like to tell people what they should price at because every market is different, every area is different. And uh, you know, like for example, our balutes, we sell them for 50 cents, but I know someone down south sells them for like 20 or 30 cents each, but then someone in Washington sells them for almost a dollar each. So I mean, it's just different markets. I wouldn't be able to sell them for a dollar here, but I could easily sell them for 20, 30 cents here, but I'd be putting a lot of money, leaving a lot of money on the table. So that would be my suggestion with that. Uh, how are the pigs? Pigs are fine. They're going on uh, regular food next week, thank the Lord. Um, and uh, they're getting big. Well, two of them are getting big. One of them is, thinks a runt, but uh, we'll see. They're all alive. That That's a plus. Uh, Texas Caternix Quail Connection says, when baby... When baby chicks, what's the ratio of vitamin electrolytes in the water do you suggest in water? Uh, I, there is instructions on the back of the packet. Um, with the wa We have automatic waters for everything now. So we literally put it in a... Uh, I think we put two packs in. I think we put two packs in in the 10-gallon bucket. Uh, and then it, it gravity flows to all the, all the cages. Uh, so you don't need a ton. You don't need a lot at all. Uh, one or two packs will do just, just fine for you. Uh, Josh's Punk Rock Garden says, Hey, Zach, I remember you saying a week or two ago that the feed gene came from the Germ Pastel Collection. Which other genes are from that collection? That's it. I mean, pastel, but yeah, it's just... As far as I know, just the fee and the pastel, that's all I've seen that's came out of it. Um, it's a good question, but yeah, just the fee gene is underlying in the German pastel collection. Uh, can you eat the breeders when they're done? Yeah, we do. Uh, they're going to be a little bit tougher, not tough like chickens. They're going to be a little bit tougher, uh, but not a ton. And uh, yeah, you cook them right, put plenty of uh, seasoning on there and they, they do just fine. But yeah, that's, that's the ones that we butcher and eat. Um, John says, question still can't find sell it on birds or eggs. Uh, you can check out whiskey tango farms, uh, whiskey tango farms.net. I do believe that they are selling sell it on eggs. I don't know if they're doing birds. Um, but I know that they sell the eggs. Uh, Wandran says, what are the humidity percentages for incubation and lockdown? Uh, the ranges for humidity for incubation is, uh, around 40 to 45 percent is ideal. Uh, during lockdown, 65 to 75 percent, preferably gradually going up. So, you know, day 16 and 17, you're at 65 uh, percent. Day 18, you're on like 70 percent. And then after that, you just bump it up to 75 percent and get the rest of the chicks to hatch. Uh, do I need a permit to raise Katrina Quail, Missouri? I do not believe so. They're not native here, um, so you won't be releasing them into the wild. So I do not believe so, but you would have to check locally. I'm pretty sure there's only one state that requires that um, for Katrina Quail, and that is not Missouri. Uh, missed last night when we have white wings again. I'm hoping in about three weeks. Uh, maybe a little bit sooner, but I'm going to say three weeks. Um, Uh, 
uh, When's the Cooking with Zach on the Grill Show. It, m maybe never. I don't know. Uh, eventually. Um, but that's... That'll be a while. It'll be a while. Uh, join the Facebook group. They have a lot of good recipes on there because all I'm going to do is grill them out. Uh, I got my coil rail today. I'm ready to order eggs. The easy ones, whatever is available, I want them. Uh, we've got... I mean, we still have quite a bit of uh, options available on the website that you can check out. There's no jumbos, but we have quite a bit of options on the website. But good luck, congratulations, and uh, I wish you all the best. I hope uh, I hope you get a great hatch rate. How common is it for quail babies jumping out of the hatching box in the HQF incubator? Maybe GQF incubator? I haven't made a top for it. Curious if I need it. Uh, jumping out of the hatching box. If you're talking about the black box for the GQF at the very bottom, uh, they don't jump out of that at all. Um, I've never seen one be able to get past it. Um, you do need, you know, the, the small metal trays uh, that they come with. As soon as you take that lid off, they go crazy everywhere. Uh, but the black box at the bottom, uh, they can't get out of. You don't need a box or you don't need a lid for that at all, if that's what you're talking about, which I think you are. Uh, what's the law in Ohio for selling meat and eggs? Um, <laughs> uh, from my understanding, I have not updated my information on this, but from last time I looked, uh, you can sell up to a certain amount of meat as long as it's not to a business. It can be person to person. Um, and then eggs, you just need a small egg producer's license and uh, you're good to go. And it's like 25 bucks and uh, they... I do believe they come out and inspect, but I'm, I don't remember if that's true anymore. Uh, but not very much, not very much. Uh, selling to businesses for meat is a whole different thing. Uh, you have to be USDA and there's, yeah, it's a, it's a mess, not worth it. Uh, I'm making a three tier wire cage for quail. The floor is 48 inches by 14 inches. Okay. I want to keep from inbreeding for as long as possible. Should I do colony cages or split the levels? If so, how many sections? Um, I would do colony cages <laughs> is what I would do. I mean, I would do colony cages um, is what I would do. I mean, if you can build two of them, do two colony cages and then just take the males from one and put the hens with the other when they hatch out. Uh, you could do it that way. Or if you're only going, going to make one colony cage, then just make one colony cage. Um, and uh, you can, if you've got multiple, multiple males in there and multiple hens, um, ideally I say that you need to add new blood after about every th three generations or three years, pretty much a generation uh, for quail. And so with that being said, that's true, except if you're doing colony cages, you're getting a bunch of different males and a bunch, bunch of different genes and a bunch of different hens and things like that. So you could go longer with that, but you could just, you know, get a couple of eggs in, in three years and, and uh, you're good to go. But I, I prefer colony cages. It's less feeders, less waters, less things to break. Uh, less places to go, faster to take care of. I prefer colony cages. Uh, do I need a license to raise quail in Missouri? I do not believe so. Nope. And that was the second question about that tonight. I don't think you do. I would check locally, uh, but I'm pretty sure you don't. Uh, hello, Zach. Are your gold, are your golds good layers? Yeah, they are in the top four at least. Um, maybe second or third. Rosettas are the best. Uh, Tibetans are probably second, and then golds and scarlets, but they're all really close together. Uh, but yeah, the golds are very good layers. Our jumbo white eggs average 13 grams, even though we only incubate 13 gram plus. Is it the feed limiting egg size? Birds are fatties, just not the eggs. Um, our jumbo white eggs average 13 grams. Okay even though we only incubate 13 gram plus. Well, if you're going to be breeding for egg size, it does take about two to three generations to start seeing progress. Uh, now, with that being said, if you've already done that two or three generation process and it's still not increasing your egg size, then yeah, it would be, um, it would be a feed thing. Uh, 
I would need to know how many generations you got into them to try to go above the 13 grand thing to give you a good answer. Uh, Crystal says, five days from first lockdown, first several days, my temps were reading low, low 90s. Ooh. All over the place, then I recalibrated good now, uh, wondering if I should wait a few days to lockdown. Um, well, you could go either way. Uh, I don't think there's a wrong answer. The last thing you want to do is for them to start hatching and they be in the trays because that could really mess them up. And it's still turning. Um, so that's not ideal. Um, if they're still incubating, which I would assume that they're going to be a few days late, so I like the thought process behind that, you really don't want to increase the humidity too much because these are the final day state. These are the final days of their growth stage, um, and you really don't want to mess that up either. Um, yeah, I would probably do half and half. I would probably put them in lockdown on day sixteen, um, and you definitely need to keep them in there until. I don't know, probably day 23 or 24 um, is what I would do. They're definitely going to hatch late, for sure. That's a for sure. Uh, everyone, hey, Zach, how's everything going tonight? Uh, it's going well. It's busy, and uh, I'm running around like crazy, but I'm here. So I uh, can't complain. La Sierra Acres Hatchery, welcome. S. McKee says, okay, don't hit the thumbs up if you don't like him. As for me, I think he's worth it. Maybe I missed a comment, sorry. Um, but thank you very much, I appreciate it. And yeah, if you could, hit the like button, support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, gr the Grazing Farmstead says you can apply for an egg handling permit, but they're not poultry, so move forward as you wish. There you go. Oh, you're talking to Brandon from Missouri. Thank you very much. Um, Jasmine, again, says you don't need a permit much. Richie says, I have seven hens, eight months, been housed together for the winter. Only getting six eggs daily. I separated into small groups, narrowed down to two hens. Should I each quail lay the same color pattern eggs? Yeah, usually. I mean, they're going to differ a little bit, but yeah. I mean, they're, they're going to lay close to the same every day. Um, and if you've got seven hens and you're getting six eggs a day, then that's correct. That's what you should be getting. Um, some days five, some days seven. Most days six is... I mean, so that sounds that sounds accurate. Uh, Ashley says, when will you be getting the jumbo eggs? In about three weeks, they'll be on the website, I hope. Uh, that's the plan. Gretchen says, what incubator do you recommend? Small homestead, 25 to 50 capacity. Uh, as far as that goes, I would recommend the uh, Nurturite 360. Uh, before you do that, I would uh, go into the YouTube search bar at the top and type in Nurturite 360 by my Shire Farm. I did a video on a review on that. You could kind of check that out and make sure that that works for you. And uh, that's something that you would be comfortable with. And, uh, but yeah, I, for that capacity and starting out, I think the Nurture 360 is a good one. Uh, Taylor says, what do you do when GQF 1550 incubator came in broken twice and you have eggs already in the mail being shipped? Gee. Um, I, Make sure that I'd get a hold of somebody from GQF real fast is what I would do. Um, I would contact them tomorrow. Most likely if they've been, if they've already reshipped you, then they're going to have your information on file. They'll have an order number, um, file number and all that. I would contact them and say, I need you to overnight one to me immediately. If you can't get a hold of them or they're not willing to do that or whatever, you could go to Tractor Supply or go to Amazon and buy one to get there next day or go to Tractor Supply and get a uh, Farm Innovator or a Little Giant. Um, I'd hate for you to, to buy that when you've already bought the GQF. Um, from my understanding, they're a pretty... I mean, I've not... I don't know them very well. It's a big company. Um, I don't know them at all. I just just my purchase you know what i mean uh but i would i would get a hold of somebody tomorrow and i 
can't imagine that they would not overnight one to you. Um, would be my suggestion first. What are the max and minimums of for eggs going? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. Can you recomment that? I don't. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, Ohio on farm sales are okay. Eggs are also okay on farm and egg license needed for farmers market. That's true. If you're going to be selling uh, consignments, if you're going to be selling farmers markets to grocery stores, to uh, restaurants or anything like that, you do need a small egg producer's license. But if you are selling on the farm, uh, you do not need either. That is correct. Uh, hello, I'm very excited. I purchased a used quail cage and six quail picking them up this coming Saturday. That's awesome. Congratulations. I wish you all the best. Uh, I think you're going to do great. Pablo's in the house. Hi, Zach. I built two brooders similar to the ones you have. I saw someone commented on a Facebook group that if a single drop of water touched the heat lamp, it will explode. What do you think of that? I don't think that that's true. I don't think you really want to get them wet either, though. I mean... I wouldn't, I'm a little confused on why the water would get there. Like if the water is underneath them and just somehow a, a drop of water splashes on it, you're fine. But if you've got somehow water above the heat lamp, that's not a good idea. But if most likely you're meaning like if they just splash it on there, it you'd be all right. I mean, there's a, there's a case that it could blow, but it's very unlikely. I think I've maybe had, I don't know, four blown bulbs in the past two years. Um, and they were getting older. I should have switched them out before then. What type of handouts would you recommend giving to live bird customers? Uh, handouts. Um... I guess it would depend on which, how you want to do it. I guess it would depend on how you want to do it. Um, I, if it was me, I would do a handout with resources. So Facebook resources, uh, community resources, backyard chicken group, um, YouTube videos that help you raise quail or whatever. So it would just be a... You know, here's my contact information, but here's a bunch of other ways that you can learn more about quail. And if you have questions, you can go to one of these places. Is probably what I would do. Um, or you can kind of come up with your own how to raise quail. Uh, you know, what you recommend with your feed, what you recommend with how many quail per square foot, like the basics of quail. Uh, and you could put that in the handout. But uh, tip, in, in my opinion, I, I think, here's my mindset. I think people need more than just quick information. I think they need resources that they can continue to go back to, such as YouTube videos or Facebook groups or other groups like um, Backyard Chickens or stuff like that. Um, it would be my recommendation. It's a good question. Uh, well, uh, what do you do when a GQF incubator comes in broken twice and you already have a thousand eggs coming in the mail? Uh, we answered that one. Uh, best of luck to you. Um, well, a little giant one wor wouldn't work for that. Uh, what are the minimum maximum weight for eggs going into incubator? Uh, I, that I think is a personal choice. I think that really depends on where you're at and what you've got and things like that. Um, uh, you know, there's, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll use South Africa. There's a person in South Africa that can't get, they don't have jumbo wilds there. Um, so they have standards. Uh, so they're wanting to make the jumbo wild. So really you just got to do biggest to biggest is what you got to do. Um, so the best, uh, I don't want to say, well, yeah, yeah. I'll say best practice. The best practice that you could do with that is average your eggs. So, you know, let's say you have 15 eggs a day. You take those 15 eggs, you weigh them together, and you divide it by 15. You get the average. Let's say your average is 13 grams, right? Okay, now you're gonna weigh them individually, 
you only need to do this once, okay? So this is a one-time deal and then you do it again the next generation. You don't have to do this every time. So you get the average, you say the average is 13 grams and you wanna increase that to let's say 16 grams. Okay, so that's the goal. So you're gonna take those individual eggs and say, okay, this egg is nine grams. We're not using it. This egg is 13 grams. That's a probably not, but maybe. This egg's a 15 gram. Okay, this one for sure we're gonna use. And let's say at the end you have, uh, out of 20 eggs you've got 10 that are above 13, you've got five that are 13 and five below. That again would be a personal call. The best practice would be not to use the 13 and only use the 10, only incubate the 10 out of the 20. But if you're trying to get numbers up as well, then you could increase, you could use those and incubate all 15. Uh, but long story short, it's biggest to biggest is what you want to do. Uh, but you got to get the average first and then find out what's above your average. Hopefully that made sense. I hope. Uh, do you know how much food it takes to raise a quail from chick to butcher? Uh, jumbo versus standard. Um, I believe it's in our video, quail math. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it costs... Well, I could... Oh, I don't have a calculator right now. I've got both my things running. Uh, it costs a dollar. Um, I don't know if I have the actual feed in there, but, uh, that's how much feed it costs to raise a quail to 10 weeks old, not eight weeks. Um, I probably would not have the number for the eight weeks. I've always done 10. Uh, oh, no, I don't think I do. I think that as far as the cost goes, I've always done up to 10 weeks. Um, so with that being said, um, whatever your feed cost is, you know, you could do the math that way, but I would check out the quail math video for... Um, for meat, and that should give you the answer there. Would you recommend a small-scale breeder like me focusing on feather sexable breeder sets or whatever colors I enjoy raising? If not feather sexable, would it be good to practice to ban males in sets? <coughs> Sorry. Um, I mean, it would be a good practice to ban the males if you'd like. Uh, I like the feather sex pool, but you're also limiting yourself. The big thing with that is if you're going to be a small scale breeder and you're going to try to sell, the feather sex pool idea is a good idea. And I do push the feather sex pools because I think it's easier for first timers to raise. But if you're only raising feather sex pool, that is a bunch of colors that you're not going to be able to offer them. Uh, so if they say, well, out of all the quail that you know, what's the best egg layer? Well, the best egg layer for me is the Rosettas. They're not feather sexable. So, I mean, you could say, well, the the most productive quail that I have is the the golds. You know, those are feather sexable and those are very productive. Uh, but you're just, you're losing, you know, you won't have growl fees. You won't have Rosettas or Scarlets or Tibetans or uh, Pansies or Sparkly. Well, pansies or uh, this, that, and the other. So if you have limited room and you can only pick one, then yeah, do all the feather sexable colors. That's a good idea. But if you've got the room, um, I would try to sell them all. I, th I think that that uh, would help the customers in the long run and, and give you more sales. It's um, a good question again. Uh, Jose says, are you going to have jumbo blue egg, blue egg layers. Uh, we are working on that. I don't know if we're going to continue it. Um, I'll find out in about three weeks what, what we're going to do. Uh, I might get rid of those cages uh, and increase our jumbo wilds uh, to keep them in stock. Or we might just keep working on it and just keep the jumbos off stock whenever we sell out. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But <laughs> Even if we did, it's we're still probably a year and a half away from being able to offer them. It takes a long time for the blue egg layers, and it takes a long time uh, for jumbos. So putting those two together, it's a very long process. Um, again, everybody that's here, thank you very much for showing up. Uh, I'm only reading the questions tonight, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, please put question marks or explanation points at the beginning or at the end or both uh, with your question so it's easier for me to see. Uh, but I won't be reading any of the comments that don't have that, that aren't asking a question. Uh, I feel a little guilty for not 
responding to you, but uh, it's supposed to be a rapid fire, which I tend to forget sometimes. So that's what's going on here. Uh, but thank you very much for showing up. And if you could support the channel by just hitting the like button, I would ap appreciate it. I'd love to get to 100 likes tonight if we could do that. That'd be pretty cool. Is it necessary to candle eggs between incubation and lockdown? Nope, it's not necessary. Um, you can. You can. not It's really whatever you want to do. Um, you can always candle afterwards and see which ones are fertile and which ones are not. Um, I prefer people that are just starting out not to candle. I'd rather you candle on like your third or fourth try. Um, not meaning, not saying that you shouldn't, it's a good practice to candle after the hatch is done and you can find out what's fertile, what's not, and kind of determine, you know, well, was it temp? Was it humidity? Was it chipping? Was it weather? Was it this? Was it fluctuation? Was it, you know, a bunch of different stuff. Uh, but candling between incubation lockdowns, not necessary. Um, it's kind of nice to know too. So I think, I think it's a personal choice. Uh, addition to my feather sex will question, meaning raising to sell to local customers. I can properly vent sex my own birds, but thinking about newbies trying to, yeah, yeah, I, I got that. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Uh, we used to do that. We don't do it anymore, but we ship ours. Um, so if we, if it was a local pickup, we would do that. But with the shipping, they're in the mail for a few days, um, which already stresses them out. And then the leg band or whatever we use, uh, typically that quail started getting beat up more in the box. Uh, so we, we got rid of it. But that was mainly a shipping thing and not, you know, if, you, if it's local pickup or something like that, that would work just fine. What's wrong with the N? I don't know what that means. What's broken with it? I don't know what that... Maybe you're not talking to me, Kiki. Uh, can you explain what you like... Uh, why you like the GQF versus your home-built incubator pros and cons? Um, yeah, our home... Our... our Incubator that we built uh, is great and it serves its purpose. It's really, really big, so uh, circulation is an issue. Um, you know, you you've just got more space, which means you need more heat. You know, consistently. Uh, I like the fact that I mean, obviously, I need both, um, but I like the fact that a GQF is much, much smaller, um, uses a lot less energy. Um, and it's easier to stabilize. Uh, once the big incubators start fluctuating, it's really hard to get, get them back. Uh, you know, you got to place fans here and you got to place fans here and you got to, you know, keep checking each level and, and things like that. So I'm not, I'm, I think both are great, uh, but uh, it's a fluctuation issue mainly uh, that I prefer the GQF. I move my thermometer hygrometer uh, around my incubator and temp is 88 to 90 in all corners. Now what do I bag and chuck the eggs? Um, I think you're still kind of early on the, um, I think you're still kind of early, you're, you're on day four. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yet, no. Uh, I'd bump the crap out of that incubator. I mean, I'd put it at like 105, to, however, you know, I think they max out at like 105, most do. Um, I bump the crap out of that incubator and, um, hopefully that increases the temp. It, it could also be that the Govi needs to be, uh, calibrated. Uh, I think that you're, you, oh yeah. Well, I don't know if you're using the Govi, um, putting words in your mouth, Joy. Uh, it could be that the, the thermometer hygrometer that you're using is just not calibrated. So that could be, uh, what it is as well, um, yeah, I'd, I'd bump it up and, I mean, I'd keep going. Worst worst thing that happens is they don't hatch, you know. Uh, but I don't know if I'd trust, trust the thermometer. What are good books to learn about quail raising? Um, I don't have any that I'm comfortable with. Um... Uh, 
I don't think I'm comfortable with recommending any books. I'm sorry. There's a ton of YouTube channels, uh, Whiskey Tango Farm, Slightly Redneck, myself, um, Living Traditions Homestead has a bunch of uh, YouTube videos about uh, quail, and then we've got a bunch of Facebook groups that uh, are great communities that, that share each other's experiences. Uh, but as far as books go, I, I don't have any that I'm very comfortable with. Out of 74 fertile eggs at lockdown, why did I only get 34 chicks? You had a humidity issue. Your humidity was not high enough. The egg did not soften enough. The chick could not break out. Um, that is for sure. I could guarantee you it's a humidity issue. I can guarantee it. Um, <clears throat> if you had 74 fertile eggs and only 34 hatched, your temperature seemed to be, I mean, I don't know how many you incubated, but your temperature, um, it looks, sounds like, uh, that your temperature is right on, rotation's right on, um, but yeah, you had a major humidity issue at the end. Um, I ordered 25 eggs February 11th, are we still three weeks out with shipping? Um. No, you'd go out within three weeks. I won't be putting them back on until all the uh, all the uh, orders are out. But uh, I don't have. I wouldn't have an ETA for you right now. You could text me uh, your order number or the name on the order, and I can give you a a very close to ETA. But uh, I wouldn't know off the top of my head. We had a lot of orders that day. Uh, I looked at some; they were just about to hatch, but didn't. Yep, absolutely. Um, well, if you're reading 73% on the incubator, incubators lie, so most likely that was much, much lower. Um, but I can almost guarantee you it was a humidity issue. I can almost guarantee it. Trying to find the question, sorry. Uh, hmm. I thought you had a candle to make sure you don't get any rotten exploding eggs. No, that's, I mean, very rarely is one going to explode, very rarely. I've probably had two ever explode in the incubator. Um, or in lockdown. I, it's not worth It's better to keep them stable and keep the temp on them and things like that uh, than candling. I'll put it that way. How many quails should a family of four have for meat and eggs? Um, I would recommend checking out the quail math videos I did. Uh, and that should give you all the information you need as far as what to think about and what would work best for you. <clears throat> Uh, can I pecking be caused by having too many quail in one pen? Yep, it could. Uh, it could also be an aggressive male, actually. Um, usually hens will peck at the male's eyes if they're being a little too rough with them. Uh, so that's another option as well. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Overcrowding or even undercrowding can, can cause that issue as well. Um, Gary says, since March 2nd, I've had 20 eggs laid. The hens will be six weeks old Monday. Okay. As of Thursday, I should have about 30 with 30 with the hens and the ruse being so young. What are the chances of any hatching? Uh, it's five days. I mean, you probably get a 60% hatch rate. It'd be a little low, but you, I think you'd get at least half the hatch. Um, Steve says, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, any suggestions or corrections for the quail math calculator I shared with you earlier? Uh, no, not that I've noticed so far. Um, I won't know for sure, for sure until I do the next round. Uh, but no, I mean, everything looked good to me. I thought it was awesome. Uh, are you on Facebook? I think I emailed you and asked if you wanted to share it to everybody, but I don't remember getting an email back. So maybe I didn't send the email. I wrote it. I hope I sent it. Cheryl says, I have a jumbo wild that won't stand up. She doesn't extend her legs to walk. 
Uh, is she too heavy for her legs to support her? I don't know. I don't know how big she is. Um, it, that could be a lot of things. That could be a feet issue. I, I mean, it could be an age issue. Uh, it could be an injury to the legs. You know, she got injured somehow to the feet, the feet or the legs or the toes even. Um, th there could be a lot of explanations for that. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Joy, I would actually, I would, <laughs> I would go off of your incubator. I wouldn't go off your thermometer hygrometer this round. I'd go off your incubator. So I'd set it, I'd set your incubator at 100 degrees. I'd take the thermometer hygrometer out and let it ride that way. But I just, I'm having a hard time trusting the thermometer that just won't change in temps. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Um, how can I get some eggs in Jamaica? I just got an incubator and I'm really interested. I do not know. Um, between COVID and between the, uh, avian influenza outbreak, I can't imagine anybody, anybody being able to ship eggs out. Uh, out of the country right now. Um, I'm sorry. Hopefully you can find someone in your area. That'd be awesome. Uh, but I don't know anyone that would risk exporting eggs right now. Um, I'm sorry. I wish you all the best, though. Uh, good evening, Zach. I hatched your Jimbo Wiles and got one white wing male and one white chested female. I have them in the breeder cage. Will they carry on that trait? Uh, I love the look. Um... You said you had a male. Had your Jumbo Wilds and got one white winged male, one white chested female. Well, they'll both carry the white. Um, most likely, the white chested female is probably not going to carry it next generation, uh, but the white winged male will. Will. Uh, yeah, it was a male that picked. Yeah, so I would assume a hen was pretty much the hen back off and it wasn't listening uh my first temp i incubated 10 eggs five hatched but died shortly after hatching any advice would be great uh i would recommend checking out a video i did a while ago it's called why are my chicks dying i think is what it's called uh so you could literally just search in the youtube search bar why are my chicks dying by my shire farm and it's the top five reasons for chick fatality uh, and that should give you a lot better information than what I could think of off the top of my head right now. Um, not on Facebook. Okay. Um, if you can't, make sure that I at least emailed that to you because I had more to say in that. <laughs> I hope I emailed it to you. There's some times where I'll type out an email and then just hit back instead of hitting send first. I don't know why I, I just try to go too fast, I guess. Uh, yeah, please make sure that I emailed you back. I asked you yesterday about humidity affecting the other eggs, and here I am now watching your live and building a hatcher. There you go. That's awesome. Congratulations, and uh, best of luck to you. Uh, Simon says, is there a taste difference between Bob Whites and Jumbos? A little bit. Bob Whites are going to be a little bit gamier. Um, not a lot. They're very similar. They're very they're similar. Um, but you'll like both. Uh, Little Ridge Farm says, I'm going to be getting 50 Jumbo Wilds. Thinking of doing 50 of another Jumbo, what would you recommend? If you're going to do 50 Jumbo Wilds, I would either do 50 Jumbo Egyptians or 50 Jumbo Whites. The reason I say that is because the Jumbo Whites are the second largest and the second largest eggs. But if you do the Jumbo Egyptians, then eventually you could do your own Jumbo Sex Links, which is pretty cool, and I like it. Uh, so either one. Uh, <clears throat> oh my god, I just had my first one hatch as w as we're here, my Shire Farm eggs. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully a lot more to come. I hope. Uh, congratulations. I bet they heard Zach talking and busted out. Um, I do, I, there's a lot of words said in that barn. 
usually it's, I need you to lay more eggs, or why would you do that, or something. Uh, Travis says, any suggestions on getting one-week-old chicks to switch from the mason jar water to the red water cups? Uh, you re really don't need to do anything at all. Just take the mason jar out. They'll find it. Um, that's what we do. Um, yeah, they find it within an hour or two. Uh, just make sure you have enough cups in there. Jasmine says, with the AI outbreak in the U.S., any up grades besides covering the top of the aviary for the quail keepers using aviary housing out in the country with lots of poultry waterfowl? Actually, that's a great question, but I'm not going to answer right now because I am downloading an AI video tomorrow. Uh, and that will give you what AI is, um, what the symptoms are, what to look for, um, kind of what to look for in specifically quail, uh, ways to prevent it, and things that uh, we're doing here to keep it away. And uh, so that video will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, so very good questions and I think very, very important. If you watch that video and you like the video, make sure you share it to get the word out because uh, I know a lot of people are freaking out about it. Uh, and not just in the quail community, but chicken world and, and all kinds of, uh, well, everybody pretty much. Uh, Steve says, can I feed my newly hatched quail laying pellets if I grind them up? Also chicken scratch. I was giving three bags each. You could. Uh, yeah, you could. People do it. Um, I do not like, I, I don't recommend people grinding their food. Um, in fact, somebody on here, what was it, three, four weeks ago, uh, had a massive, they kept losing chicks every day. And uh, I said, stop grinding your feed they came back on that next Sunday or maybe, yeah, that next Sunday and said, I haven't lost a chick since I stopped grinding. Uh, I've heard that so many times. I've never actually ground our feed. Uh, so I don't have personal experience with it, but I don't prefer it. But there's other people out there that really do grind their feed and they've been very successful at it. Um, so you could try it. If you start losing any chicks, I would just stop grinding altogether. Um, would be my suggestion. No worries, I'm the exact same way with email. Usually it's my kids running into the room and creating a diversion. I just checked and I don't see them. I don't seem to have gotten it. Shoot. Crap. Um, okay, email me back and then I will respond again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's hit the thumbs up, guys, if you could. Oh, we only need eight more to hit 100 likes. That'd be awesome. Thank you very much for all the support that people have done so far. Uh, Gregory says, when ordering eggs, there is an option for quantity. Choose an option. And then below, it is up and down arrow with the number one in it. What is the difference between the two? What? There is an option of quantity. Then below it, it is an up and down arrow with the number one in it. Uh, so, yeah, we've got different quantities. So you can order, like... We'll use the feather sexable mix. You can buy a 25 count, a 50 count, a 110 count, a 170 count, a 240 count, 220 count, whatever. It just goes up. So you could buy that. And then um, underneath that, the one with the arrow is, you know, let's say you want, um, what's a good example? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's say pansy fees. I think you can only order a, a 25 or a 50 count. So let's say you order 50 count, but really you want 110, so you would do that quantity two, which means you'd be ordering two of the 50 counts. I feel like I really did not explain that well, but I hope you understand that. I know what I'm trying to say, I just don't think it came out well. Sorry. Uh, now I think I need 50 jumbo whites and 50 jumbo Egyptians. I See, I know, I know, it's a... It's an addiction. We've all got it. You're not alone. Um, Steven says, I think I'm going to need a bigger boat, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, last thing we need is AI to be like Newcastle virus was here in California. Looking forward to an AI video. I agree, uh, which is a big reason why... I really wanted our MPIP uh, to do it, and he's coming out next month, and I'm, I'm hoping that he'll do another video on that because uh, he's going to be more equipped to be able to do a video on that. Uh, but I did do my research. We did talk to him, and um, 
and we've been doing biosecurity for a while here, so I'm just gonna give you it. It's very plain, it's very standard, it's very easy to understand, but it's also not very technical and things like that. Uh, but I'm hoping that he'll do a better technical video uh, when, the, when he comes out next month. Um, because yeah, we really do not want a new castle virus, uh, like we had in California. That was, that was awful. That was awful. Uh, Simon says, what does AI stand for? Avian influenza, AKA the bird flu. Uh, and really what it's, it's a virus. Um, and, uh, it spreads very quickly. Uh, G Rubin says 93. I'm assuming you're the 93rd. Hey, we hit 107 likes. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you. Um, Thanks for answering my question. Could I ferment the feed after I grind it? You could, yep. Fermenting is a great idea. Um, and if you've got the time and, and energy and effort and uh, you can do it, then absolutely. I, I really do like the fermenting idea. I just don't like the grinding idea. Joy says, then bump the ink temp up as far as it would go. No different now. The ink is saying the temp is 108. Yeah, I would, that's what I would do. I mean, I, th I think that you're, you're, it's pretty much roulette anyway. Uh, and if we go by the thermometer inside the incubator, you know, the thermometer hygrometer, um, they're not going to hatch. But if we can put the incubator at 100 degrees and just say this one time we're going to trust the incubator, um, I'd put it at 100 degrees and let it ride is what I would do. Hey, Zach, have you ever had uh, a hen that laid a white egg regularly? Yeah. We have. Yeah. It's not very common, but it's not like super, super, well, it is probably super rare. It's not very common. Uh, okay, I'll start with the local ones have used, as you said, but my dream is to have your jumbos all the types if possible, but are not popular in Jamaica, so I want to take over the market. I hear that, and uh, best of luck to you, and as soon as I can get approved again, uh, I'd love to be able to ship you some. I think that's really cool starting out other other places like that. I think that's awesome. Little Ridge Farm says, bad when I'm addicted and haven't gotten my building ready or cages built yet. You got it bad. Uh, Gregory says, I understand what you said. Oh, good. <laughs> good. It makes sense. We'll be ordering 110 in the mix colors tonight as I got another incubator day. I could, uh, I could not just get the 50. There you go. Well, best of luck to you. I'll get them out as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, best of luck to you. And I'm glad you understood my gibberish I, I don't even know what i was doing uh just received my incubator ordered two types of wire to build cages converting a huge coleman cooler into a brooder very cool very creative that's awesome uh best of luck that's really cool man um i'm watching eggs hatch right now unfortunately they are not from you however the second incubator i have is full of yours can't wait for them to all be here well congratulations i hope you get a great hatch on both and uh, that's super cool. So best of luck, and uh, I hope you get many, many chicks in both incubators. I was finishing a new pen in the rain this afternoon. Oh, there you go. Uh, we actually did not work on our cage today. We're going to start on that tomorrow. But um, <clears throat> we're going to be... Here's a quick story. So our we have a butcher shop that really has not been utilized. Um, and... The last time it was utilized, um, which was probably two years ago, the cooler inside broke, which is pretty expensive to fix. So for the past two years, it's pretty much been storage. So I don't have time to clean it all out, disinfect it, fix the freezer, spend money on the freezer and things like that. So I called around and called around and called around and I called nine different places, which is pretty much all of them in Ohio. And eight of them are booked up for the rest of the year and not taking any more orders to be able to process a pig. The ninth one I called and said, uh, actually, I just got off the phone and someone canceled. If you can bring it up here by Thursday morning, I'll get it done this week. And I said, are you serious? And they're like, yeah. And I said, that is awesome. They're two hours away. So, um... I don't actually have a horse trailer, so I'm going to take my trailer and we're going to rig it into a pig trailer uh, with some pallets tomorrow. 
Uh, so that might take a little bit of time out of my day tomorrow, but uh, that is what that's going to be consisting of tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a video on it. Mm, it's probably going to look bad. I probably won't. Maybe. It might be fun. Jasmine says, question I get asked all the time, can I use a rabbit hutch for quail? Thoughts on improvements for quail? I'm actually thinking about converting my rabbit condos half solid and one by half galvanized wire. Um, yeah, I, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people do that and uh, we have done it before. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on what rabbit hutch, but usually rabbit hutches are one by half all the way around. I would probably re, um, I put, I would leave the one by half on the floor, but I'd put half by half on the sides and the top, um, to be more predator proof. But, uh, yeah, they work great. They work great. Uh, I thought egg size wasn't an indicator of future bird size. It is not. Did I say that? I don't. If I implied that, I didn't mean that. I meant biggest egg to biggest egg. I I think I know what you meant. I meant biggest egg with biggest egg. I didn't mean biggest to biggest bird, which if you're wanting to increase your size, you would do big bird to big bird. Egg size doesn't have a lot to do with it. It does a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, but if you're doing egg size, then yeah, egg size to big, the big egg to the big egg is the way you do it. If I said something different, I apologize, but I do think that I might have said, you know, use the biggest to the biggest, which makes it sound like you use your biggest quail to your biggest quail to get bigger eggs, and that's not how you would do it. So thank you very much uh, for pointing that out. What the quail farm says, had to build a new pin for the Myshire farm. I'm sorry, contest quail, we won, lol, thanks, Zach. Not a problem, and congratulations, and uh, sorry I put you to work. Uh, we have to see the pallet pig trailer. Uh, will I... I'm not going to, I mean, I'm going to move fast because there's a lot of stuff I got to get done tomorrow and it's two hours away. So that means Wednesday, I'm literally going to be gone for four hours, which I was not planning on, but I've got to get this pig done. Um, so yeah. And I have to be back by two o'clock because our insurance guy is coming out and I have a meeting with him. So it's just farm life, man. There's never... It's always something. Fluid changes all the time. Uh, how are your moves towards uh, delving into rabbits going? Uh, honestly, I not very well. <laughs> um, I mean, we kind of have a plan, but really until I get... I'm very single-minded. Uh, my wife is not. She's able to focus on a lot of different things. I'm not. Uh, so right now my focus is getting bees at the end of the month, starting that, and then once that's done and I'm comfortable with that, I'll move on to the rabbits, which ideal, I would get rabbits now, but um, I can't do both and run the business and be a father and keep up with life and, and, and. So um, yeah, it, I, it's just going to have to be done on my time. So uh, the rabbit thing is not going great right now, but I didn't think that I would get to it until summer anyway. Uh, but I for sure, I, well, I don't want to say for sure, you never know what's going to happen, but the plan is for, to have them for a while before QuailCon happens. Uh, how do you get tuxedo quail? They seem to be among the least of the mixed hatches I've had. You've probably had, you probably have a video. Uh, yeah, tuxedos are pretty much the base. Uh, so for example, you can put Tibetan, Rosetta, Scarlet, uh, growl feet, pretty much almost anything. Pharaoh, Italian, I mean, pretty much anything. Use those males and put white females with them and you'll start producing tuxedos. Uh, what's the optimal temperature for adult quail? What's the minimum and maximum range? They don't really care. They'll adjust. Um, yeah, they, they don't really care at all. I mean, I ship to people in Alaska that have them in an uninsulated barn. Uh, and I ship them to places in Texas that get 115 degrees outside, outside. So, uh, yeah, they're very adaptable. The temp's not a big deal for adults. <clears throat> Just shoot a still pick for us. Maybe. We'll see how bad I do. Uh, High, High Country Art says, I just bought a bunch of quarter-inch mesh for the bottom of quail cages. Would that work, or would you suggest to get half-inch? 
I wouldn't use the quarter inch, I'm sorry. Um, you could use the quarter inch on the sides and on the top, that's not a bad idea at all, um, but I wouldn't use it on the bottom. The poop's not gonna go through and you're gonna hate life in just a little, little, little while. Uh, the half inch is gonna work for a while. Eventually it's gonna get bad, but you could always keep cleaning it out and pressure washing it, that wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, the perfect is one by half inch. Uh, but you're using a mesh, so half inch would work fine. Um, and then you'll just have to clean it out once every year. I mean, not a lot, you know, especially if you don't have a lot in there. Uh, but I wouldn't use the quarter inch, even with the chicks, unfortunately. Uh, would it make it harder for the catch trays underneath for waste? Yes. Yep, the poop wouldn't go through. It'd be, it'd be pretty gross pretty fast with the quarter inch. So half inch is much better. I'm sorry. Uh, do you recommend source to find out about California regu regulations regarding quail farming and meat and egg sales? Uh, I would look up, um, I'd look up your NPIP in California, NPIP, the Natural Poultry Improvement Plan uh, website for California. Um, and, or actually, yeah, so you type in MPIP, you go to their website, and then I think it's on the, the left side, you can actually pick each state. So you would just go to California, and then that will give you all the rules, laws, regulations, um, things that they test for, this, that, and the other. Um, so that's what I would do. Uh, make sure he's hungry and use that food to get him in the trailer. Hopefully it goes well. I know a lot of people who have a heck of a time. Uh, well, yeah, it's, I don't, the pig's pretty, yeah. Um, and it's right outside, um, of my driveway is where the pig's at right now. I mean, it's in a field, but it's a very small field because she just gave birth, what, two months ago? Um, but she's a bad mom and, uh, she's got to go. She's got to go. So my trailer comes down so I can literally back it up right to the door and she doesn't even have to get outside the fence. Like we just, as soon as she gets to the door, it goes into the trailer. So I don't think that's going to be the issue. I think it's me making something that I probably shouldn't be making, uh, is going to be the issue. Um, and she's always hungry. <laughs> uh, my breeder set is about six weeks old. The male is beginning to try to mate with the hens. Sure. I've noticed that they are starting to chatter quite a bit. Do they get more vocal when, uh, get closer to adults? Yep, absolutely. And it sounds like you, uh, yeah, the hens, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All of that is completely normal. Uh, thanks for answering all my questions and everyone else's tonight. I appreciate the time you spend helping the communities act. Not a problem. Thanks for asking and sharing. Uh, you have some fresh bacon to wrap the quail to grill. Absolutely. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's fairly affordable, too. I've never actually uh, bought, I've never paid someone to process uh, an animal. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't, there's too many projects. I, I called George today and said, dude, I found someone. He's like, are you kidding? And I was like, nope, found somebody. I was like, they're two hours away. And he's like, how much? And I told him, he's like, that's not bad at all. And I was like, I know, I, it's kind of scary, low, <laughs> but cool. And, uh, and I was like, I don't know. I, I mean, if you think about it, I'm driving two hours there. I'm driving two hours back. That's four hours. And then in a week or two, I got to go pick it up. And that's another four hours. So in eight hours... Can we fix the butcher shop? Can we clean it up? Can we disinfect it? And can we butcher? And he said, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we probably could. It'd be close. I mean, you're going to be spending more money. I said, well, I know, but I've got to fix the butcher shop in the first, or eventually anyway. He's like, well, the only thing you're thinking about that is, yeah, you're going to be gone, but I won't. I can work on the cages while you're gone. And I was like, that's true, because if we do the butcher thing together, we'd both be out of the barn, and I can't afford that right now. So, uh, so yeah, this is the first time I'm doing that. But, uh, yeah, we'll fix the butcher shop this year, and then we'll do three or four processing pig pigs next year, hopefully a cow or two, uh, hopefully a couple goats, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, how much are the quail stunted if they're crowded for a couple of weeks. My younger birds are almost as large as the older ones. I moved them on time this time. Uh, that's a great question. 
Um, I probably keep them on a starter grower feed that's very high in protein, 28, 30% until the ones that are stunted. I'd probably keep them on there for 12 to 13 weeks. Um, and hopefully they'll catch up. Most of them will. There's some that I don't think will. Uh, but they most of them should be able to catch up. It's just going to take them a little longer. But I would keep them on a starter grower for longer, for sure. Uh, do you ever smoke quail? We do. Yeah, we've got a smoker, and uh, that's delicious as well. Um, <clears throat> plus fuel costs two hours each way. What does a butcher cost range? Uh, they said that with... Um, some things that I wanted done, plus curing the ham and the bacon and uh, doing a couple different things that I wanted done. Uh, he called it the works. Um, he said that he would do it for 250 bucks, which comes out to be a little less than a dollar and a pound. Um, which, I mean, it'd be nice to do it ourselves. But uh, with everything going on, um, I think it's a decent price. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I'll probably pay more in gas, to be honest with you. Uh, probably not, but, uh, yeah, I'll have to take the truck and the trailer down there, so that's going to be expensive, but on the way back, I'll take my wife's car, which is a Prius, um, so I'll spend, like, four dollars in gas. Uh, but, talking about gas, guess what? Ohio just reached four dollars a gallon, uh, first time ever, so that was really upsetting today. Uh, I've got three-fourths of a tank, and I thought... I mean, maybe they have a price cut in the next, probably Wednesday, because that's when I'm taking the truck. So that's a bummer. Uh, how is Papa the Builder doing? Doing well. He's doing his own thing. He's building a treehouse Viking ship upside down boat thing. I don't really know. Um... He's got a couple different projects going on. He tried to build a, uh, a massive, like, 50, a huge canner, and that kind of blew up, literally. Uh, so then he tried to take the parts and may make it into a hot water heater, uh, so in case power goes out, we could put water in it and then have hot showers, and that did not go well either. So uh, I don't think a lot of people want to talk to him right now, but... Uh, yeah, he's doing his own thing and coming up with crazy ideas. <clears throat> uh, I was going to order 110 jumbo quail eggs because I have 120 egg turner, but I heard the jumbos you have, uh, you might have to space them out uh, so I can only fit 20 or 60 jumbo eggs. With 10 spots. No, I think you'd be okay. I think you'd be all right. I think... I think the 110 would be okay. I'd hate for you to buy the 60 and then buy another 60 because you want the 110. Uh, and I hate not you utilizing the incubator. I think that you'll use those 10 extra spots. Um, I, I think you'd be okay. You might have to not use one or two, but that would save you a lot in shipping in the long run. Um, $4, LOL. I wish. It sucks living in California. Yeah, I no, I, I understand. I get it. I, I didn't, I should have been more, yeah, I get it. But uh, it's a lot for us in Ohio. <laughs> it's never happened before. But you guys are like, what, six, seven bucks? It's ridiculous. Five, five and a half, six bucks is what you're at now? That's, I start riding a bike. Uh, will one styrofoam incubator hold 110 quail at hatching time or do I need two? Uh, the styrofoam incubators hold, uh, yeah, 120 eggs, 120 quail eggs, 409 for gas. That's what it was here. Uh, 535 for cheap gas here in California. This is ridiculous. 419 in Florida. It's ridiculous. Uh, 450. $100 to fill up the Silverado yesterday. Yeah, it takes, it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. Gas will hit five dollars before it goes back to three. I know. Luckily, I don't go very much anywhere, <laughs> like post office and back. That's I don't. I'm always on the farm, so. But it hurts. It still hurts. My buddy got gas 
gas at 9 a.m. at 3.99. At 3 p.m., the same gas station was 4.29. I believe that. Uh, hi, Zach. How long would an order of Egyptian fee eggs take to be shipped now, more or less? Uh, rough estimate, two weeks, just to be safe. Uh, Ed, it was 4.19 at the mobile by my house yesterday, and today I, had, I paid 4.50 at the mobile by work. It's very upsetting, everybody. 459 in Washington State. Forget quail map. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's gases. It's rough. It's rough. Uh, guys, thank you very much for showing up. It was supposed to be a rapid fire, and I, I'm tired. <laughs> So uh, I did not go as fast as I usually do. So I apologize, but thank you very much for asking all the questions. We had some really good questions tonight. A ton of people like the channel, so, or like the video, so thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow I'll be posting an AI video, uh, tips and tricks on how to prevent it and what it is and all that jazz. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that that's very helpful. And then later on this week, we're doing a B video. It's already done. I'll be posting it. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll like that. And um, I don't think I'll be getting to any other videos this week uh, as that four hour trip is going to uh, pretty much cancel out any extra stuff I wanted to do. And I am working on taxes this week because they have to be done by the 27th of this month because uh, that's when I meet my tax people. Um, so uh, yeah, got to start on that now. A lot of, lot of stuff to do. So, uh, those two videos are coming this week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Some good stuff is coming your way. Next week on my list for the videos is when and how we ship, uh, a fee gene video, um, and uh, there was something else. Oh, issues with quail is what I'm hoping to get to. So, splay leg, Rhinec, um, you know, all kinds of different stuff. Viruses, diseases, things like that. Uh, so I'm hoping to get to that one, but that's not been confirmed yet. Um, but the other two, I'm almost positive I can get done. I'm also hoping to do a brooder quail video, best practices on that. I think that might help a lot as well. Uh, so we're going to try to get you a lot of information quickly so that you can be successful in your quail journey. And uh, I wish you all the best. And it looks like I had one more question, but now I don't see it. I thought I saw it on there. Maybe, maybe I'm just seeing things. Uh, so thank you very much for showing up. I really appreciate you. We got some good videos coming your way. Stay tuned. And until next time, everybody, stay safe.